Hello, welcome back to Algebra. We're going to conquer the topic called the Remainder Theorem of Polynomials in Algebra. This is part one of two. So we're covering what we call the Remainder Theorem. Now, keep in mind that we're going to understand and learn this theorem in this lesson, but in the next couple of lessons we'll conquer something called the Factor Theorem. The Remainder Theorem and the Factor Theorem kind of go together like peanut butter and jelly. They, they very much are cousins of one another, but I don't want to put them in the same lesson because it'll make it too long and too cumbersome. So just keep in mind that you are going to understand the remainder theorem in this lesson, but when we get to the factor theorem, I'll be referencing this theorem and it'll come together and it'll even make more sense once we can put both of them together. Now, this theorem frequently gives students problems. It doesn't make a lot of sense the first time you read it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut to the chase. I'm going to write the theorem down. Uh, you won't understand how it's true or why it's true, but I'll explain what it does. Then we'll do a quick example to show you how to use it. That's what I really want you to be able to do. It's very, very simple to use the, the remainder theorem uh, of polynomials. And then what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'm not going to prove the theorem, but I'm going to show you why it works. I want you to know why it works. And then we'll wrap up the lesson with another example. So we're going to get a couple of examples here. We're going to get some a little bit of theory, a little bit of background about why it works. And then in the next, next lesson, we'll crank up the complexity a little bit more. So here we're talking about the remainder theorem. So you might think it has something to do with the remainders, and you'll be right. So the remainder theorem. That's what the TH means, remainder theorem. All right, so here's my best guess, at, uh, my best way of writing it down in a way that's going to be to the point. If the polynomial, that's what poly means, p of x, so I'm just naming any polynomial p of x, could be any polynomial you want, any degree, right, is if that polynomial is divided uh, by some quantity x minus c. Now this could be x minus 1, x minus 3, x minus 4. Also it could be, because c could be positive or negative, it could be x plus 5, x plus 10. You know, just like we were doing for synthetic division, if it's divided by anything like this, then the following thing is true. Then the remainder, that's why it's called the remainder theorem, when you do that division, the remainder left over when you do that division is the value P evaluated at C. Now I'm going to let that sink in for a little bit because it doesn't make a lot of sense. We normally think about remainders as being something to do with division because that's, that's what it is, right? But now I'm telling you that this remainder is kind of connected to the value P of C. What am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say that we know how to evaluate polynomials. When I say P of C, that means I'm putting some number into the polynomial. I'm calculating what it can do. So let's say I want to calculate this value of this polynomial when x is equal to 2. Of course I can do it manually, I can just stick it in, all, in the value and, and calculate the polynomial, right? But what I'm also saying is there's another way to find the value of that uh, polynomial evaluated at that number. And that way to do it is to divide the polynomial by, uh, by that same number, basically x minus that number, and then crank through it all and figure out what the remainder is at the end. The remainder is going to be the value p evaluated at c. So, for an example, I always like to give examples that make everything easier. Let's say we have some polynomial. It could be any polynomial you want, but I'm going to pick one here. 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 5x minus 1. So here's a polynomial. You all know that I can put numbers into this polynomial and I can calculate the answers. That's what we have been doing forever. So I can put the number 1 in here and I can calculate the value. I can put the number 17 in here and calculate the value. But you also have to agree that because it's cube terms and x, and x squared terms and so on, that it might be a little cumbersome to evaluate that polynomial by sticking the number in there. Because let's say I put the number 11 in, I'll have to take 11 cubed, then multiply by 2, then 11 squared, then multiply by negative 7, then 11 times 5 and all this, and I have to add all the terms together. So there's a lot of multiplications going on because of the exponents, and then I have to add everything together. So if I want to evaluate the value of this polynomial and a number, I can do it. Of course I can, but I have to crank through all of those exponents and, and do it. What this remainder theorem is telling you, telling you that if you want to find, I can find any value I want, but let's just pick one, p evaluated at 3. So if I wanted to do that, I would stick 3 in here and cube it, 3 in here and square it, 3 and so on, and I would multiply and add everything. But another way to find it, then the value p of 3 that I'm seeking to find is the remainder left over 
when we divide this polynomial that in question divided by x minus 3. I need to let you uh, sink this, have the sink in, because really the, the black text is kind of like what you might see in a book, but really everything below the black text is really what I want you to think about because it's much easier. Say you have some polynomial. You want to figure out what the value of it is at x is equal to 3. Of course I can put the number 3 in there and calculate it, but there's an alternative way to find out what the value is here. And that alternative way is to take this polynomial and divide it by x minus whatever I'm evaluating it at. But I don't care about the value of the division, I only care about the remainder. Just that single number at the very, very end. That number is the one I circle, and that's going to be the value p evaluated at c. And p evaluated at the number 3. So let's give a concrete example. I want to take this polynomial here. I want to divide, I want to figure out what p evaluated at 3 is. All right? So I'm telling you that I take this polynomial, which is 2, negative 7, 5, negative 1. I'm going to do synthetic division here, right? I'm telling you I have to divide it. Of course I could do the long division. There's no problem with that, but we already know that synthetic division is much, much easier to do when we're dividing by x minus a number or x plus a number. Remember, I told you that there would be other uses for synthetic division, and here's, here's one of them. So we're dividing by something that allows us to use synthetic division. We're just going to do synthetic division because it's easier to do. So I'm going to do this here, and I need to divide by x minus 3. We know when we do synthetic division that I have to put the opposite sign here. The negative 3 becomes a positive 3. We're going to do this division. So I draw my horizontal line. I drag my 2 down. 3 times 2 is 6. Add these together, get negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Add these together, get a 2. 3 times 2 is 6. And add these together, and you get a 5. I don't care about any of these numbers, or any of these numbers, or any of these numbers, or any of these numbers. The only thing I care about for the factor th for the remainder theorem is this number. The remainder was equal to 5. And what that means is that the polynomial evaluated at the number 3 is actually equal to 5. It's crazy, right? It doesn't seem like that would be true, but it is true. Let's go verify this. The polynomial is given as 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 5x minus 1. So let's evaluate p evaluated at 3. So it's 2x cubed. So we'll say 2, 3 cubed minus 7x squared. 7, 3 squared plus 5x, uh, which is 5 times 3, and then minus 1. All right? So what we have here is 2 times 3 cubed is 27. Uh, and then 3 squared is 9. 9 times 7 is going to be 63. And then we have 5 times 3 is 15 uh, minus 1. And if you go crank through this, 2 times 27, you subtract the 63 and add these numbers and so on, uh, you're going to get 5, which is exactly what we predicted. So why do we care about the factor theorem, or the, uh, the remainder? I, I, see, I keep saying factor theorem because we're going to be learning about the factor theorem. It's very closely related to this. The reason we care is because when we're evaluating polynomials, nowadays with computers it doesn't matter because a computer, you know, you, you, can, you, can, you can calculate anything you want. But if you were doing this by hand, then you would have to calculate, you know, 3 times 3 times 3 and then 3 times 3 here, and then 3 times 5 here, and you have to multiply and add everything. Now that's just for the number 3. What if I were calculating the polynomial evaluated at the number 127? Right? Then I would have to cube 127, then I have to square 127, and multiply 127 times 5, and multiply and add to get the value of what it is. It's going to actually be easier to do the synthetic division here because I don't have any cubes anywhere. Notice I haven't cubed anything. I just drop, multiply, drop, multiply, drop, multiply, drop. All I care about is the last number. So the uh, remainder theorem is very often used, especially when you're doing things by hand. But there's also another use for it because we're going to tie it into what we call the factor theorem later on. For right now, I only want you to know when you want to find the value of a polynomial at a number, just divide by x minus that number, and then the remainder that you get is going to be the value that you seek. That's really all I'm trying to say, and so that's what the black text is saying. If the polynomial p of x is divided by this number, then the remainder when you do that is the value of p evaluated at that number. Okay. Now we want to turn our attention to why does it work. I'm not going to do a rigorous proof of it. So we're going to say why does the um, remainder theorem work. Why does it work? I think uh, 
even though we're not going to do a rigorous mathematical proof of it, we're not going to do a 10-page proof on why the, the remainder theorem works, I think it's instructive for us to decompose a little bit more what, what's really happening here. So notice that it all hinges back to this division process. We're saying that when we take the polynomial, we divide by this, something magical happens where the remainder becomes important, basically. So let's kind of explore that a little bit. If we take this polynomial, whatever it is, I'm going to generalize it here, right? And we divide by something on the outside, it goes out here, right? And the answer that you get, we call it Q of X. Why? Because we have names for all of these things. This thing is called the quotient. Okay? This thing on the inside is called the dividend. Normally I don't care about uh, labeling things, but it's going to help us here in a second. This thing on the outside, this whole term, is called the divisor. That's what I'm dividing by. Now when I go through this process, you know, I'm going to multiply, I'm going to subtract, and all this stuff, I'm going to go blah, 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 all the way to the end. Eventually I'm going to get some remainder. And this is called the remainder. We've done long division enough to know that you're going to get some kind of remainder at the end, right? So let's go ahead and go through this process. Do, I've already done it with synthetic division. We know the process ends with a remainder of five. But let's just go through it uh, because it won't take long and it's going to help me uh, explain to you why this remainder theorem actually works. So for this polynomial, we had 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 5x minus 1, and we were dividing it uh, by x minus 3. Remember we said when we take the polynomial divide by x minus 3 that's going to give us the value. The remainder will be the value p evaluated at 3. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. Verify what the remainder is and then we can crank through it. So x times what gives me 2x cubed? There's got to be a 2x squared there. Multiply down there. I'm going to get a 2x cubed. Multiply down here will be negative 6x squared. We're going a little fast because we've done division many, many times before. We subtract both of these, we get a zero here. Seven minus a negative six means seven, I'm sorry, negative seven basically plus six. Negative seven minus a minus six is negative seven plus six, and that's going to be negative one x squared. So negative one x squared. Then I take and drag my next thing down, like this. x times what gives me negative x squared? It's got to be negative x. Multiply here gives me negative x squared. Negative x times this gives me positive three x and I need to subtract these two. These subtract to give me zero. Five minus three gives me two x. Then I have to drag my next guy down, which is minus one. x times something gives me two x. It has to be a two. Multiply, it's going to give me a two x. Two times the negative three gives me negative six. I have to subtract them. Negative one minus a negative six means negative one plus six, which gives me a five. And that's exactly what we said. The remainder had to be equal to 5. I just wanted to do it again so you can see I'm not doing any funny business with the synthetic division. I'm taking the polynomial. I'm dividing by x minus 3. The remainder I'm getting is 5. And we've already shown you that when you plug the value of 3 in, you get a 5. Now what we want to do is explore a little bit more closely why it falls out that way. And does it work for all numbers, right? All right. So what we want to do is we want to talk about if we do this division here, right, or in, in general any kind of division here. How do we check the answer, right? If we wanted to, to check the answer here, we've done that many times before. When I taught you division, I taught you how to check it. I said, well, what you do is you take what you get at the top, you multiply by what's out here, and then whatever you get as a, as a result, you add the remainder, and then what you should get back is what's underneath. So another way of saying as, is that as you take the divisor, you multiply it by the quotient, which is what the answer that you got was, uh, and you're going to get something, but you have to add the remainder back into it to get what's underneath. This is exactly the same thing as dividing, you know, um, dividing um, 19 by 3 or something like this, and you're going to get a 5 here. That's 15. You're going to subtract, and you're going to get a 4. You're going to get a remainder of 4, right? So what we're basically saying is that in order to check this division, you take what's in front, the 3, you multiply it by the 5, and you have to add the remainder back in. So you're going to get 15 plus 4, and if you get 19, if you get what's un underneath here, then the division was correct. So we're doing the same thing here. We take the divisor, we multiply by the quotient, we add the remainder, and what we get should be equal to what's under here, the dividend. So if you're going to generalize that, the way you say it is you say um, the polynomial p of x is going to be equal to the q of x that you get for the answer, that, that uh, quotient there times 
the divisor x minus c plus the remainder. All I've said is this polynomial here is going to be equal to the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. We're just checking our work and it has to equal what's under here. So for this case, it's this times this plus the remainder has got to equal this. All right, so let's, let's kind of change it a little bit into the problem that we actually have. So what we're basically saying is this polynomial p of x, which we know what it is, is given in our problem statement, is going to be equal to q of x uh, times x minus 3, because we divided by x minus 3, plus the remainder. But what I'm trying to say is this checking of the work here works for, for, for the polynomial, whatever you've divided by, when you multiply these guys and add the remainder, it must be what is, you must recover what is um, uh, under here. And this is equivalent. What we're saying is the polynomial is actually equal to this thing, whatever it is. So that means I can put whatever value of x in, into both sides that I want to. So what if, if I want to continue, I will say, well, what if I want to evaluate the polynomial at the value of 3? That's what I want to do. So that means that I'll take the quotient that I get as an answer, and then I'm going to plug the value of 3 in here, right? Um, and I'm going to have to add my remainder. Notice what's happened here. 3 minus 3 is 0. I guess what I'm trying to say is when you divide by this, you're dividing by a very special thing. And you're dividing by x minus 3 because eventually I want to plug in a value of 3 there. So what is going to happen is when I plug a value of 3 in there, this goes to 0. So p evaluated at 3 is equal to 0 plus the remainder, which means the value evaluated at 3 of this polynomial is equal to the remainder, which is equal to 5. So the, the uh, uh, polynomial evaluated at 3 is equal to 5. All right? And this is not a proof but this is showing you that it works and why it works. The reason why it works is because when you do division, what you have is the answer that you get at the top times your divisor, and then you add your remainder in. But if you divide this polynomial by a very special number, a number such that if I'm trying to evaluate at x is equal to 3, I'm going to put x minus 3 here so that I will get a 0 here. Then whenever that happens, the remainder is what is equal to what I'm trying to find. And it always works out that way. If I'm trying to evaluate the polynomial at x is equal to 10, then I want to divide by x minus 10. Why? Because when I put the 10 in here, which would be like 10 minus 10, I'd be, div I'd be basically divided by x minus 10. So this equation will be having x minus 10 here. But I'm going to put the value of 10 in here, which drops the whole term out. So that's why it's not so much of a coincidence that whenever it's not a coincidence that your want to evaluate the polynomial x is equal to 3 and you divide by x minus 3. It's not a coincidence at all. It's because when you put a value of 3 in here, then when you kind of quote unquote check the polynomial, the, um, this term drops away. So whatever you're trying to evaluate at, you divide by x minus that, and then the remainder that you have left over is always going to equal to the number that you seek. That's why it works. All right. So I want to do one more problem. I know it's a little bit fuzzy. I mean, even to me, I know what this theorem means, but it's a little bit weird. But the reason it works is because of the way division works. When we divide by things, then in order to check them, we have to backwards multiply and, add, and, and plug in and add the remainder back in. So if we divide by the, by the very special thing that we, that we, we, we know we're going to get, a, 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 it's going to drop away to zero. If we basically divide by x minus the number that we're trying to evaluate at, the term drops away and then the answer is what the remainder is. So it's kind of going a back doorway of figuring out what that polynomial is equal to. So just give one more example. We're going to use the remainder theorem to evaluate the following polynomial. p of x is x cubed uh, minus 2x squared minus 5x minus 7. And we're going to evaluate, uh, we want to find um, p of 4. We want to find the value of p is equal to 4. So this means, in terms of our theorem, c is equal to 4. What do I mean by c? The um, theorem says if a polynomial p of x is divided by x minus c, then the remainder is the value p of c. So I, I kind of bring the, the, the letter c in there not to confuse you, just because it's kind of a generalized thing, and that's how the theorems are written in your books. But the bottom line is, if I'm trying to evaluate this thing at p is equal to 4, all I have to do is find the remainder when I take p of x and I divide it by x minus 4. 
right? So I, I divide by x minus 4 because there's a positive 4 in there. I divide by x minus c in terms of the theorem, so I'm dividing by x minus 4 right there. So I can say that uh, uh, the remainder I get when I do that is going to be equal to this value here. Right? So now I want to divide it. Now I can do long division. I can take this thing and I can divide by x minus 4. That would work fine, but I like synthetic division. It's actually easier to do. So I'm going to do synthetic division. 1x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x minus 7. And I'm going to divide that by x minus 4. But for, long divi for synthetic division, I have to switch the sign, make it 4. So then I'm going to go down and drop a 1. And then I do it. 4 times 1 is 4. Add these together, I'm going to get a 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Add these together, I'll get a 3. 3 times 4 is 12. And I'll add these together, and I will get a 5. And the only number that I care about is the very last one, the remainder. So the remainder is equal to 5. So that means, because of this theorem, that this polynomial evaluated at the number 4 is equal to 5. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to to go through the whole, this is, I'm going to check this polynomial by doing this and substitute. You don't have to do any of that. The purpose of this was just to show you why it works. It works because if I take a polynomial and divide by something, I'm going to have this format with a remainder. To check it, the original polynomial is always going to be equal to the answer you get times what you divided by plus the remainder. So if you divide by something very closely related to what you're trying to evaluate here, in this case, we're doing um, x is equal to 3. We wanted to evaluate p as equal to p of 3, is what we were trying to do. Then the polynomial was equal to the quotient times the, the uh, divisor plus this. If we plug a va put a value of 3 in here, the 3 minus 3 makes it drop out. So that's why we're always dividing by something closely related to what we're trying to evaluate by. So the bottom line is, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to go through the proof of why it works every time. But I do like you to know where things come from. What you do is they give you a polynomial. They say find p evaluated at 4. You say, okay, I'm going to divide by x minus 4. Now you can do that with long division, as we did before. Or you can do it with synthetic division. If we do it with synthetic division, we have to change the sign of, of this number. When we do this in the synthetic division process, we get a remainder of 5. So, five, so we know that p of 4 is equal to 5. The remainder of a polynomial is always equal to that polynomial divided by um, uh, when it's divided by x minus the number. So the better way to think about it is generally how you'll see it in your textbook. If a polynomial is divided by x minus something, then the remainder when you do that division is the value p evaluated at c. These are always going to be the same number. If you want p evaluated at 34, divide by x minus 34, find the remainder. If you want p evaluated at 7, divide by x minus 7, find the remainder. If you want p at negative 2, because they can be negative 2, if you want p evaluated at negative 2, then divide by x plus 2, because you can have x minus a minus 2. Divide by x plus 2, and then find that remainder. So make sure you understand this, and do all of these problems yourself. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll get a little more practice with the remainder theorem in algebra.